course of human events, there have only been a handful of truly great accomplishments. The erection of the pyramids of Giza, the construction of Stonehenge, and tonight, on World's Cheapest Horror Movie Theater, we proudly present another such astounding accomplishment. I was a teenage throwback, written by Kevin Jones, and starring the subhuman creature. The overturned SUV's wheels still spun in midair as the day's young man pulled himself free from the twisted wreckage. Wallace clutched the ragged stump that had once been his left hand as a station wagon rolled to a stop at the side of the country road. A tall, skeletal man exited the vehicle smiled reassuringly as he spoke. My name is Dr. Pierce, son. Come with me and I'll give you some help. After a short drive, the doctor parked outside of an old cabin. A man in a white medical orderly's uniform awaited their arrival. He helped the doctor whisk the injured man inside. As Pierce helped the badly wounded team onto an examination table, the orderly looked anxiously at his employer. Doctor, are you sure the serum is ready for human trials? The surgeon smiled, but it was not an expression of joy. It was a grin of a fanatic who was lost in his own darkness. The serum is ready. Not only will it save this boy's life, but it will turn him into something that is more than a man. In a hundred years' time, climate change will devastate the earth. Temperatures will rise, crops will fail, and the world's coastal areas will be completely submerged. Man, as he exists now, will not be able to survive in such a harsh environment. We must become what we were thousands of years ago in order to continue as a viable species. The doctor retrieved a syringe filled with an eerie glowing liquid and injected the semi-conscious young man. Within seconds, all of his injuries had completely healed. The doctor grinned triumphantly. Just beautiful. The serum worked exactly as I had hoped. The orderly glanced down nervously at the sleeping young man. How long until he makes the change, doctor? It's hard to say, but we don't want him anywhere near us when his metamorphosis occurs. But doctor, how will we know that the experiment was a success if we don't keep the test subject under observation? The surgeon grinned savagely at his accomplice. Believe me, my friend, when this young man becomes his true self, the whole world will be talking about it. The rubble-strewn vacant field reeked of urine and decay. A dead cat with maggots crawling along its face lay a few feet away from the day's team. He pushed himself to his knees. The morning sun felt warm on his skin as he rose to his feet and stumbled towards home. As he approached his dilapidated house, his hand began to throb and pulsate. He looked down at his fingers. They almost seemed alien, like they belonged to a stranger. As he slipped in the front door, his alcoholic father staggered into the living room. He slurred his words badly as he spoke. Where have you been all night, Wally? The trembling teen shrugged his shoulders as he mumbled. Can't remember. His father's massive fist slammed into the frightened boy's jaw sank to his knees as the abusive drunk raised his hand to strike him once again, but the blow never came. The intoxicated old man stumbled backwards, his eyes growing wide with terror as his son started to change into something that was not quite human. The frightened teen awoke on his bed. Slowly he began to notice that his clothes were shredded rags that were covered in blood. His eyes fell upon the closed bedroom door. Somehow he knew that there was something terrible on the other side. Wallace glanced at the clock. If he didn't get dressed soon, he would be late for school. He quickly threw on clean clothes and slipped out the window. He could not bring himself to face whatever lay beyond the bedroom door. Near the entrance, the Wallace 
Texas high school stood a large man in a gray suit. The stranger intently scrutinized each boy that passed him. A look of recognition spread across his craggy face as his eyes fell upon Wallace. He spoke in a gravelly tone. Are you Wallace Munson? The withdrawn teen nodded silently. I'm Detective Rothschild. I understand you were out last night with three of your friends. None of them returned home. Their parents are worried sick. Do you know anything about this? Wallace stared blankly at him for a few seconds before replying. Let me buy, I'm late for class. Look, kid, why don't you make it easy on both of us and just tell us what happened last night? The solemn teen tried to slip past him. Detective Rothschild grabbed him by his shirt and reached for his handcuffs. All right, punk. So you want to do this the hard? Whatever he was about to say died on his lips as Wallace Munson started to change. The boy's face twisted and contorted as coarse, dark hairs began to sprout up all over his skin. Within a matter of seconds, the teen had grown three feet taller. Detective Rothschild's body trembled violently as he stared up into the face of the towering subhuman beast. The monstrous creature let out a ferocious roar before falling on his latest victim. Dr. Pierce smiled as he watched the news. On the flickering television screen, anchors breathlessly reported that a creature that eyewitnesses had described as an inhuman monster had brutally rampaged through the grounds of the school, killing dozens of students before being gunned down by police. Dr. Pierce switched off the television set and stepped into the laboratory where bubbling test tubes and whirling centrifuges produced more of his serum. His assistant stepped into the mad scientist's lair. Have you seen the news, doctor? Pierce nodded. My creature was absolutely astounding, wasn't he? The doctor waved his hand excitedly around the room. Soon, I will have enough of my serum to inoculate the whole city. All we need do is introduce it into the reservoir's waters. A hundred thousand people will be transformed into things of beauty. My creatures will be strong enough to withstand the cataclysms that are sure to come. The doctor turned to his assistant. Tears of joy streamed down his face as he spoke. For the first time in my life, as I look forward to the future, I find myself filled with a profound sense of hope.